Hello, Frank Lloyd Wright fans, fans of modern architecture, fans of organic architecture. This is Colin Slace, architect in Phoenix, Arizona area. With you again, glad to be with you for this week's presentation on our own furniture that my wife and I designed and built ourselves for the most part with the help sometimes um, from a handyman. But um, uh, this is our home's uh, furniture. We call our house Optimista, just like Frank Lloyd Wright named most of his houses Optimista, uh, which is Spanish for optimist, which we are. We're very optimistic. We have been through the Great Recession and now through the pandemic, and we continue to be. And we hope that you all, that you all are optimistic as well about the future and that the future is bright and that we can be creative and build and design and um, keep on keeping on. So today, again, as usual, I like to just uh, go through a quick, brief little summary of basic information on this particular project. Obviously, my wife and I are the clients. Um, we live in a one-story townhome. This is an interior remodel that's about 1,190 square feet. Very low budget. Again, we started this in 2008 during the Great Recession, and it was a scary time. And so here we are buying a house and spending money that um, I must admit a lot of people were advising us not to. So we just we nibbled at it month by month year by year. We did this over a process of many years. And I, I promise you that you can have whatever you want in due time. If you're patient and you dribble away at it, you can have it. That's what we did. Um, we completed our furniture and the house remodel in about 2016. Like I said, we did most of the work ourselves and with a handyman through those eight years. Um, and we were able to spread it out over that time. Um, our home, and which is an in, in interior remodel, and the furniture that we designed and built is all inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright. And I think you will clearly see that in the upcoming slides. Um, all of the furniture is basically built from birch plywood and oak one by trim. So birch plywood from the all the main uh, material suppliers, Lowe's, Home Depot, we had kind of near our area here. So went there a lot, four foot by eight foot sheets of birch plywood. You know, again, back in those days, it was like maybe 30 bucks a sheet. And so we would draw it all out and design it to see how many pieces we could get cut out of one sheet of plywood and um, design it so that it was easy assembly, mainly glue and screw, wood screws and wood glue. Um, and I think you'll see that we came out with some pretty cool results that we're very happy with. Um, and yeah, like I said, everything basically kind of from Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, need to start out by saying that, you know, just like Frank Lloyd Wright did, there, there's always some sort of geometric pattern or design motif in the design. In our case, since it was an, since it was an existing home, we had to take, we had to work with what we had. And so in our case, there was this existing half circle window up high in the living room area. And I thought, there's our design motif. That's the shape that we're gonna take. And we're gonna work with that throughout the whole house. So we actually went to a, a glass place here in town, bought some mirror and had them cut the shape of this mirror into the shape of the half circle window and um, that mirror actually reflects sun down the hallway and creates a half circle shaped sun pattern or sunlight in the hallway. But the sun also comes directly through that window, which is opposite this wall and creates a, a sunlight pattern in that same shape in the living room on the wall too. So three, you know, actually four times this shape occurs just from that window, the mirror, the reflection behind us in the hallway, and then the sun coming directly through that window onto the living room wall here. So that's the geometric shape we used throughout the house. Um, so here's uh, the first piece of furniture. 
Um, not the first one we built, but the first piece that we're looking at today. Um, this is my take on Frank Lloyd Wright's barrel chair, which I think he designed for, um, uh, let's see, the Roby House. And maybe it was that, was that 1904, 1906. Um, maybe it came after that. Um, I can't quite remember now if it came during Wright's um, building of his Taliesin, uh, Taliesin East, but it was early in his prairie uh, prairie style years, his prairie period, so to speak, in the early 1900s. Um, he did the barrel chair, which was a circular shape. And then I think, you know, almost half of that was the back of the chair. Um, so I took, again, three quarter inch standard birch plywood, kind of had this radial pattern around this prefabricated um, uh, circular wood piece from Home Depot. Um, used that as the main seat of the chair, and then created these similar pieces that kind of have this little sort of ledge built into them on which I glued and screwed the seat, and it all kind of locks together. Um, did the three quarter inch birch plywood arms here, stained those a different color, same color as the seat, and then actually used, I think it was about an eighth inch thick piece of plexiglass that was easily bendable screwed that to the vertical supports here and it just works out worked out great it was very very easy um, to do and then I used a, a piece of uh, plexiglass down here as well to kind of um, tie all of these bottom bottoms of the pieces together to kind of keep it from racking give it some stability then I did a footstool same materials three quarter inch plywood um, just an, just an X shape where you cut a a notch out of the panels and sort of fit them together this way. And then I had um, same lady that did the seat cushions for our, all of our furniture come in and do some custom seat cushions. Um, and we chose this kind of rust red color because that matches um, the curtain color in our house and in, in each room. Um, also, you can kind of pick up some of that color here in the rug and then from the floor. Um, and then here is a Frank Lloyd Wright design lamp that you can purchase as well. Obviously, it's a replica of a design he did uh, that was used in many homes. And so I've got that on my shelf here. I should have turned that light on actually for this photo because I actually do sit here and use that light to read by. So and then of course, this footstool slides in underneath the chair. So there's that nesting capability. Then here's a bar stool that's in our kitchen uh, breakfast room area. And you can see now the relationship, you know, kind of between the two. Again, we use that same, this is already a pre-made piece of wood that Home Depot sells. I think it's kind of like a butcher block type material. Sanded it, stained it, sealed it several times. Three quarter inch birch plywood again. Another uh, piece here, this is actually for your feet to set on. So kind of a foot rest. Um, and then I did some kind of uh, corner uh, posts here to kind of help structurally tie, tie the pieces together and to kind of form more of a support as well and to give it just some additional sort of decorative detail. And then we just glued this top piece to these three quarter inch plywood pieces and then screwed in flush with the wood with wood screws. Um, so get a lot of compliments on this. Um, here is a bedroom table. So across from the bed, again, three quarter inch birch plywood. And you know, what's great about this is you can see the grain of the wood. And you know, that's the beauty of it. You know, let that show through. Don't cover it up. Don't paint it. Oh, you can. And in, in one case in the living room, we do. And I'll show you that. But you can just let that beautiful grain pattern show through. And then here, in this case, we used one by three. Um, here, this I think was a uh, like an ash uh, trim piece. I can't remember if it was ash or alder, but it was just stock one by material, which is three quarter inches thick. Comes in different widths: one by two, one by three, one by four, one by six, one by eight. Kind of just like just like two by studs, uh, you know, different general sizes. Um, and then we did kind of a kind of a double plywood piece here just to give this vertical, these vertical supports some thickness and some detail and put little um, brass feet at the bottom to accommodate for any um, 
uh, irregularities in the floor kind of lifts it up off the floor a little bit. It's stable, everything's glued and screwed. It's hard to see here, but there's wood screws in through the wood here, flush with the top, uh, sanded it, stained it, sealed it. I think in this case, actually, we didn't even stain it. We just sealed it several times with, um, with a sealer. And um, I mean, it is, it is absolutely beautiful. We love it. It's, it reflects light off of it. It shines. Just had a great time with these. Then these are our nightstands. So again, in the bedroom, again, same thing, just a shorter table. I think these were a little bit, uh, just uh, uh, a little bit shorter in length this way, and then a little bit shorter um, from the ground to the top. I wanted the tops of these nightstands to align with the top of the mattress so that when you turn your head and look, you're not looking at the side of, of a, of a table, but you can look across it. You can access things on it easily, the clock when the alarm goes off. And then you've got that kind of horizontal continuity of that line extending all the way across from the nightstands across the bed mattress to the other nightstand on the other side. We also did our custom headboard here. Again, piece of three quarter inch plywood, trimmed it out with some one by one, which is this three quarter inch square mitered it here, glued that to the edge, uh, glued a one by piece to the headboard here so that this one by line kind of continued all the way across, a la Frank Lloyd Wright, that horizontality, that integrated uh, detail there of the, of the materials. Going into our breakfast room, this was one of the first pieces I did build. Um, so that we had this existing bay window here. And so I built this, uh, this built-in bench. Once again, three quarter inch birch plywood, stained, sealed, had um, someone come and make us a custom seat cushion. Um, we chose green to match the green of the bushes outside. Um, in this case, I actually put gravel underneath it which was supposed to be a continuation of the gravel outside. And it did, but once, we, once you put the tape, the breakfast room table here, you really can't see any of that and appreciate it. We have since removed that gravel. Um, to clean it, we had to vacuum under there. And we have two cats and they would get in there and a lot of cat hair and dust. And, and it just kind of wasn't, wasn't very practical. So that was, there are, have been a few cases where my desire to be, uh, you know, to, to sort of incorporate Franklin Wright's organic principles. You know, in this case, we don't have the Cherokee red concrete floor to flow right to the outside. So I was doing everything I could to bring the outside literally to the inside. In that case, I think I took it a little far, but got the four vertical support pieces here. And I mean, you could, uh, you, you could put a thousand pounds on the top of this thing and it wouldn't be going anywhere. Um, and then here's the uh, breakfast room table in front of that bench now. Um, so did a, a square table here, again, three quarter inch birch ply. In this case, one by, I think it was one by three or four, I can't remember now, but one by oak, standard. You know, this is off the shelf, standard oak trim pieces. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. You just cut it to fit, miter it, glue it, screw it. Here you can see the screws here, the screws into the top here. Um, here's that detail, kind of like the bar stool. Um, in this case, I did kind of uh, two pieces of three quarter inch plywood to create kind of an L shape. And then I did this, uh, I think it was like a two by two, just solid piece of wood as kind of a, uh, just kind of give it some detail there and some extra sort of thickness or depth for structure to screw to and to support the table. Again, stain that a different color. I'm really liking this two-tone idea. Doesn't all have to be the same color. Express the difference in the material and the detail. Gives it some interest. Um, and then in this case, we designed and built these chairs. So here you go again. Remember that half circle shape of the window? Look at that. Incorporate it into the design here. Three quarter inch plywood again, three quarter inch plywood seat that cantilevers out a bit. Custom seat cushions, again, of course, we match the bench. We use green to relate to the green of the plants outside. 
You have your three chairs around the three sides of the table here, the bench being the fourth seat. In this case, we did plexiglass backs. I think it was like half inch thick plexiglass, had a guy cut them to the size, and we actually pilot drilled holes through that plexiglass and then wood screwed that plexiglass right to the plywood here. Created a little bit of an angle in that back seat, not quite going full Frank Lloyd Wright, 90 degree angle here. It's just very uncomfortable. Um, did a little bit of an angle here for comfort. I wish I had done a little bit more of an angle, um, but uh, anyway, they're pretty comfortable. These seat cushions, just um, Velcro connect here to clean them. You just, un, uh, just, un, just detach the Velcro and they come right off. We've never had to clean them very much um, over the years. Um, so we haven't had to throw them in the wash yet, but they, there's a zipper in the back. So they just unzip and, uh, and you can wash them. Again, we use the wood screws here. Um, here is the dining table. So we have an open plan living, living dining room. And then the kitchen breakfast room are kind of their own space um, just with a just with a pass through opening between the two. So again, I did the exact same size detail specs on the dining room as we did the breakfast room. Now what's great about that? You can slide one of the tables from one room into the other, put it adjacent next to the, the, the other table, and now you can see more people. So it's that flexibility, that modularity, um, that Frank Lloyd Wright often did. Um, you know, again, here, same design for the chairs. There's that half circle again, the plexiglass backs. In this case, we did the, the green seat cushions, but here we used more of a sage green because this, this bench seating here is just composed of individual chairs. They're modular in fashion. And this is just the, you know, these are chairs that I ordered online they came in boxes and pieces that we had to assemble, but this was the seat cushion color choice that we had. I think it was either this or like tan. So we chose the, the sage green again to bring green into the space, a little more connection to nature, a connection to the sagebrush that's out here in the desert and the green of the desert plants here, Palo Verde and prickly pear. So we thought that this kind of related to the desert a little bit better. And then because the this is the dining room, we wanted the green of these seat cushions to kind of, to kind of pick up the sage green color of the, of the bench. So again, there's that, that continuity in the color scheme and in the design. Just a little detail of the corner of the table. Again, that it's, we mitered the corners, um, finished nailed that together, glued, this one by piece to the plywood, screwed through here, uh, wood screws through here. I think we used like number eight, two and three quarter inch long screws. And again, you can't see it here, but yes, I did. I had the screw slots align perfectly vertical, just like Frank Lloyd Wright had all of his screws in his board and batten homes align the horizontal. In my case, I used a Phillips uh, screw slot, so, but it is perpendicular or parallel with the floor. <laughs> um, so moving to my, um, uh, to one of the bedrooms in our house, um, this is just Ikea furniture, both of these are, but to personalize it and make it our own, we added the hardware, these door handles uh, here and here, and then look what we did here. We gave it a new top, a custom top, three quarter inch plywood again, one by three, ash or alder, I can't remember, um, trim piece, just like our bedroom. So again, you have it matching other parts of the house. We bought the birch Ikea uh, piece of furniture here to again, relate to the rest of the house. Now here, this drawer bank, which is from Ikea, which we had to assemble, which yes, wasn't super easy, but we did it. Um, used the same uh, poles here, of course, you, you match. And again, we went with the circle to go with that motif of the half circle, the full circle, kind of have that continuity again. Chose their 
Ikea's version of the birch top, which is a little bit different than the birch um, from Home Depot or Lowe's. So not quite um, that continuity there, but um, here we painted this drawer bank white only because um, though the color of this accent wall um, in this office is this sort of violet sort of fuchsia colored, which is my wife's favorite color. All the other three walls in this room are white. And so I wanted it, I didn't, I wanted it to relate to um, that other wall, to the, the white wall color. So there we did paint. Um, and then at that same desk, here was that white Ikea drawer bank with the birch top, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's a chair I designed uh, for that desk area. Um, and again, so what I did was I took the bar stool motif and utilize that here again for that continuity in each room throughout the whole house, that organic design motif, that integrated design, um, the pre-made uh, circular pre-cut butcher block wood piece, see, stained it, sealed it, went with the three quarter inch plywood, the one by one or two by two, I can't remember the size of the solid wood support piece here. Um, at that corner, uh, stained it. Custom seat cushion, again, using that rust red color because look, here's the rust red color of the curtains. Now you have that relationship. Um, custom back here with the three quarter inch plywood back, again, glued and screwed. Um, again, continuing, the, continuing that half circle design motif, um, incorporated that into the design of this chair. Just an FYI, a little side note, I had to add these one by sort of angular pieces here because the bag is angled. Um, before I had those, this was just a three quarter inch wide vertical support piece and it would move as you uh, pressed your back against this back panel and it, it would wiggle. So I had to add these uh, one by three pieces to stiffen the back, but it worked great. And when I did that, I was thinking in my head, if I were the apprentice on site here at this right uh, design project, you know, and then I, I would have to, you know, on site, I'd have to solve a problem in a way that would be approved. And so um, I came up with that kind of fix. So that was sort of after the fact, but sometimes you have to, you have to work on the fly. Here is our living room coffee table. Again, look what we're doing. There's the half circle yet again. Same size as the dining and breakfast room chairs. Three quarter inch birch plywood panels, three quarter inch panels here. One of these to come out a bit and just express um, just that different, that, that not just have it U-shaped, but just kind of express sort of the structure of the piece here and stain that a different color just to give it some visual interest again put these brass um, feet with the, the felt pads underneath. Then we had a, again, we have a glass company here in town. Um, you specify the size, the thickness, how you want the edge polished or not. Had them cut these pieces of glass and then I had them round the corners so that you could, it was easier, it's easier to move around the table and not bump into these corners. And then these are two separate pieces. So Again, you can move this piece apart, move them around if you want. Um, so there's that flexibility. And then I bought the, we bought these, um, again, online, bought some um, hassocks for some stools here. You can take the top off and they become storage containers, but, and then they slide right underneath this table. So now you have two seats, you have storage, you have flexibility and mobility, you have two pieces of glass, it's easy to clean, it's easy to put together, just it's really versatile. Oh, and by the way, we, we had the top of this glass align with the top of the seats. Again, there's that design continuity. Um, in the same living room, um, these are uh, pre-manufactured, prefabricated uh, bookcases that I think we got it, I think we ordered online from Staples. So what we did here was designed and built this custom console table. Now, my wife told me, she said, I hate entertainment centers or entertainment 
areas that are all the same material, same color, and it's that kind of oak looking sort of monotony. She said, I want something different between these bookcases. So um, I went with something painted just to really kind of even get away from sort of the wood grain and the wood look um, motif or design of this whole sort of component system. So, but we did still use three quarter inch birch ply, plywood with the one by trim. But in this case, we painted it, uh, painted it black, kind of matched the TV color. Again, we glued and screwed, but here we left the screws exposed, um, aligned the slot holes so they were parallel or perpendicular to the lines. Again, but what's cool is the three quarter inch thickness of these materials matches the three quarter inch thickness of the prefabricated bookcases. There's a little detail here of a, of a trim piece here and then the surface of uh, the bottom shelf. I mimicked that same dimension and same size and detail here. So you do have, it's like you have continuity yet you have variety. And then just, you know, created these different um, sized cubbies for uh, the different AV equipment we have, stereos, radios, C players, um, and that type of thing. And then here's a detail you can see that the thickness of this trim piece perfectly matches the thickness of this panel of the prefabricated bookcase. So it just, that detail, it just gives it that more of that custom, that attention to detail, it just really customizes that. Then what we did also in the living room um, we have this table here at the end of, uh, remember these are these ordered online um, seats that we had to put together. Um, but um, my wife wanted an end table here at the end of the seating. Um, so to um, sort of make integrate this with the TV console, we went with the black and the uh, sort of the green trim and the, the green trim kind of matches uh, this green painted trim on the ceiling in our living room. And we chose that green again to pick up the green of nature, but mainly the green of Palo Verdes and the prickly pears and the desert plant greens out here um, in the desert. And again, these bookcases back here are just standard bookcases purchased from Staples just set those in place. They're not attached or connected in any way. It's all movable, but it looks built in. And then this was great because again, we sort of used a sort of created just a U-shaped structure for this tabletop. Again, just like the coffee table. And then it created this perfect little nap cubby for our cat. Put a little rock here again to sort of um, sort of relate uh, to the rocks uh, in the desert and to the outside. So that's our furniture for our house and our, our Frank Lloyd Wright inspired design, which I think you saw and could appreciate there. Next presentation, stay tuned for Frank Lloyd Wright's David and Gladys Wright House here in, in Phoenix. Um, I was fortunate enough to be part of a wonderful team of people that helped save that house from demolition. We worked with, at the time, then Mayor Greg Stanton and um, came together as a team. It took a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of committee meetings and hearings and things like that, but we were able to save the house. And so um, we were able to tour it before it had sold and before it, it went to the current owner. And so um, I'll, be, I'll be very excited about sharing that tour with you um, at the next presentation. So stay tuned for that inside and outside talk and tour. And until then, we will see you guys then. Take care, everybody.